I want to solve this quadratic inequality, and in order to do that, just like all of these problems that I'm going to solve, I need to make sure that I have zero on the right and a single product on the left. I do not want to start by factoring that quadratic on the left. Getting a zero on the right is easy enough. All I need to do is subtract one from both sides, and to get that single product, I'm going to factor that quadratic into two linear factors. The next step is to draw a number line, and on that number line I'm going to mark the roots of the quadratic, positive one-half and negative one. Now, each of those three sections that I get to the left, the middle, and the right of those roots, the quadratic is going to be positive or negative on those sections. I need to figure out which it is. I'm going to analyze this without test values, but if you get stuck, all you need to do is pick test values in between the two roots, greater than the two roots, and less than the two roots. For example, you could choose negative 2, 0, and 1 as your test values, and simply plug them into the quadratic. Now to the right of 1 half, for numbers greater than 1 half, I know that both my linear factors are going to be positive, so I get positive times positive, which is a positive number. In between, say for 0 or 1 quarter, I know that the left-hand linear factor, 2x minus 1, is going to be a negative number every time, and the right-hand factor is going to be positive, so I get negative times positive. And in the left section of numbers, both linear factors are going to be negative every time, so I get negative times negative, which is positive. This means that the right-hand section of numbers and the left-hand section of numbers both count as valid solution sets to this problem. Additionally, I want to count negative 1 and 1 half. Why? Because the inequality says greater than or equal to 0, and at those two numbers, the quadratic is literally equal to 0, so I definitely want those in my solution set. I need to combine all this information into interval notation, so I get these two intervals with square brackets to show that I'm counting the two roots and connected with a union symbol.